Hello and welcome back everybody. I hope you're all having a great day. I'm having a really great day. Thank you for joining me again for another Tableau Tip Tuesday, the series where we shine a light on some of the more obscure capabilities that Tableau has going on underneath the hood. This is a great season for you to find those hidden gems that take your skills to a new level. Today we're going to be going over level of detail expressions. Now we're going to limit it to just fixed level of detail so that we have a basic understanding of these and then look for a future uh, video describing include and exclude functions. Now level of detail is kind of, uh, they kind of seem scary to a lot of people when they first start using Tableau. So hopefully with just a couple of quick examples here, um, we can show you that they're nothing to be afraid of, but they do... Um, garner a certain level of respect. Um, I guess in the industry they would say you know enough to be dangerous once you get to these. Um, always important to validate your results whenever you're using these calculations because there's nothing worse than shipping a report with incorrect numbers that you then base um, uh, business decisions off of. So keep that in mind as we move forward here. So first things first, what is a level of detail? Well, a level of detail is nothing more than an amalgamation or combination rather of all of the discrete fields that you have in play. So in this view, our level of detail is category and region. And if I add a segment to that up here, our new level of detail is segment, category, and region. So let's go ahead and clear that page right here. Essentially what we have here is if I take a level of detail out and we start building a text table here, we can see that it is aggregating the default aggregation of sum to the category level. And as we change our level of detail, you can see that those numbers change along with it as we would expect. So essentially, this number ceases to exist in Tableau as soon as you change that level of detail. So if I want to call that number, I would need to have a different level of detail, which is what we're going to accomplish with this calculation. So essentially, I have this calculation that I have already made right here. This is what our level of detail calculations are going to look like. You can see that the entire thing is wrapped in curly braces. And then there's essentially two sides, kind of like an equation separated by a colon. So we're fixing our level of detail to our category level, and we're summing up our sales, very similar to what the level of detail, or what our view was doing previous to this calculation. All right, so we'll press OK here, and now we can drag this onto our text field right there. And you can see, whoops, let's go ahead and make that a combined axis there. You can see that my fixed category will not change, but my level of detail will. So as I continue to change this level of detail, my aggregated results will be aggregated to the views level of detail, where you can see my uh, my fixed level of detail is still unchanging there. So we have that number called out that we can use in future calculations or, or whatever we may need it for. All right, next thing we want to cover is validation, a very important thing to do, when, especially whenever we're using these fixed LOD calculations. So if I come over here to a fixed state tab here, let's filter our view to just the United States here, make it a little bit more concise. And now we can just put a text table consisting of city and state. Now, if I put our regular sales, it's going to aggregate appropriate like appropriately right there and you can see that there are certain cities that have duplicates so there's an apple valley california and an apple valley minnesota right here so if i created a new level of detail calculation let's write our own this time and we open curly brace there fixed city separated by a colon sum of sales close the curly brace right there we'll call this fixed city and we'll go ahead and press ok now, if I drag this onto my text field here, we're going to notice some inconsistencies here. Apple Valley, California. Let's go ahead and make that combined axis there again. Don't know why I keep doing that. But we can see right here with Apple Valley, we have 1,900 sales in Apple Valley, California, and $138 in Apple Valley, Minnesota. Well, fixed city some sales is not going to take into account which state that city is. It is only looking for Apple Valley. So we need to make sure that we add an additional level of detail to our calculation. So if we fix that to city and state, we should see these values correct themselves. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll edit our calculation. And we're just going to say fixed city comma state. 
And now, since it has the context of city and state, we should have correct values in there. And now if we look at Apple Valley, we can see our same $1,900 for California and $138 for Minnesota. Perfect. We want to make sure that we're never skipping that step because, again, that's a very difficult thing to, uh, to find if you don't know your data very, very intimately. All right, next up, we're going to introduce Tableau's order of operations here. So uh, on the graphic on your screen uh, popping up here, uh, it's going to show Tableau's order of operations. So essentially, um, table calculations are not processed at the same time as calculations that are not processed at the same time as fixed calculations, so on and so forth. So we want to understand where these things are processing because it's going to give us slightly different results. So I have a map pulled up here on the screen. It's just a world map and the percent of total for each sale that each state or country uh, brought in compared to the world. Now, as we select our region and we deselect all of our regions here and we just filter straight to central, you can see that those percent of totals, maybe Canada would be an easier one. Those percent of totals are happening after my dimensional filter. So I get my region of Canada and then I get its percent of total. Now, maybe that's what we're after, but maybe we want that percentage to be the percentage that Canada contributed to the entire world. Essentially, maybe we want to keep it at the world level here and see 0 0.016 rather than when we filter to Canada seeing uh, 3%, which is uh, Manitoba's contribution to Canada. All right, so we can accomplish that again using an LOD expression since LOD expressions uh, happen with the dimensional filters right here. So we're going to call this one um, percent of world. And we're going to have a slightly different LOD right here. So I'm going to do an open curly brace. We're going to skip the left hand side of the equation where we fix it to a level of detail. We're just going to completely leave it blank. And we're just going to say um, some sales like that just wrapped in curly braces. Now what this is saying is tie it to the uh, entire data set. So this calculation is essentially going to be if we went to a blank page right here and just put sales onto text, you can see we have that $12 million number. And then the percent of world is going to be the exact same number right there. So now we have the denominator for our worldly sales. So we can use that to figure out what Manitoba contributes to the world as well as what Manitoba contributes to Canada. So if we add a modify our calculation here just a little bit, we just have to say the sum of sales, which again, that one is going to aggregate to the level of detail of my view, divided by the total amount of sales entirely. Now it's not going to work because it's going to think that I need to have aggregations on both sides of my equation. So in order to appease that, what we're going to do is we're just going to say, take a minimum of those total results. So since this result is unchanging, a minimum is not going to affect that expression right here. And this will be our final expression that will give us Manitoba's percentage uh, to the world. So we'll go ahead and put that on the label right there. And there you have our 000 or 0 0.00016 percentage. We could even take the time to format that to make it look like a percentage here. And there you go. We're starting to get exactly what we want in our chart. All right, so we're going to want run through uh, one last use case here that hopefully will show how we can use the number that we're pulling out of our data here. So our use case is how many customers have purchased n number of times. So that involves taking our customer names out there, and then we're just going to take a discrete or a uh, distinct count of the number of orders that these people have made. So I'm going to right click drag my order out and we'll go to a count distinct right here. We'll sort it descending and we can tell him there have been three people that have ordered exactly 47 times in our data set. There are three people that have ordered exactly 46 times. This view answers the question, but hopefully we can agree that it is not the prettiest view in the world. So whenever I'm exploring an LOD, I always like to build a view around the level of detail because we have essentially just figured out the level of detail expression that we want to use. It's going to be a fixed customer name, count distinct order ID. We're just going to use that number in a different fashion. So let's create the calculation here. Where we go, that's our fixed customer. 
This gives us a continuous number. Essentially, this is a column in our data set that for every customer name, it's just saying 47, 47, 47. So if I take this field and use it on a new sheet right here, it's just going to aggregate those results, which is not what we want. So instead, we're going to take this fixed customer and we're going to convert it to discrete. This will give us headers for the amount of purchases that customers have made. And now the only thing remaining for us to do is to count the number of names that belong in each bucket. So if I again right click drag this up to columns here and do a count uh, of the customer names that belong to each bucket. Oops, a count distinct rather. We can now see there's my three people that have ordered 47 times, my three people that have ordered 46 times. And again, I would take the time to validate this. So if we see our 15 here, there's one person that has ordered 15 times. So I would go back to my view that builds it the long way back here. Scroll all the way down to the 15 order frequencies and validate there is indeed only one person, Darren Budd, that has ordered exactly 15 times. All right, so hopefully that simplifies the process of LOD expressions for you. They're really not scary, um, but as you can see, you want to be double checking your results uh, just to ensure that your, your information is correct. That's all we have for you guys today. Join us next week for another tip.